Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video we are going to see about ectopic pregnancy. This is a concise presentation for medical students. Ectopic pregnancy is when embryo implants outside the uterine cavity. Now let us see about the various sites of ectopic pregnancy. The most common site is the fallopian tube. Other sites include cornua of uterus, cervix, ovary and abdominal cavity. These sites are unable to contain the growing trophoblast and embryo. So at one point in time they rupture and cause catastrophic bleeding. This picture shows a normal pregnancy in which the embryo implants in the uterine cavity. This picture shows ectopic pregnancy. The various sites include fallopian tube, ovary, cervix and interstitium. Now let us see about the etiology of ectopic pregnancy. The exact cause is not yet known. The risk factors include previous pelvic inflammatory disease. It increases the risk of ectopic pregnancy 10 times. Previous tubal surgery like sterilization and tubal reconstruction. It increases the risk 4 times. Previous ectopic pregnancy, it increases the risk 10 times. Assisted reproductive techniques like in vitro fertilization and gamete intrafallopian transfer. Intrauterine contraceptive device in situ and progesterone only contraceptive pills are the various risk factors for ectopic pregnancy. Now let us see about the assessment of a case of ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy is difficult to diagnose because the clinical presentation can vary from vaginal spotting to hemoperitoneum and shock. It should be suspected in women of childbearing age with amenorrhea, abnormal bleeding, abdominal pain or collapse. It is basically a diagnosis of exclusion. The woman will give history of pain, irregular scanty bleeding and amenorrhea in case of ectopic pregnancy. Now let us see about examination of a case of ectopic pregnancy. General examination should be done and vital signs should be measured. Abdominal examination will reveal signs of acute abdomen. Vaginal examination will reveal cervical excitation with a bulky uterus and tender adnexae. Now let us see about the various investigations done for a case of ectopic pregnancy. The two main investigations in ectopic pregnancy are beta HCG measurement and transvaginal ultrasonography. Now let us see about beta HCG measurement. Quantitative measurement of beta HCG is necessary to diagnose ectopic pregnancy. Normally between 2 and 4 weeks after ovulation, serum beta HCG levels double every 2 days in normal intrauterine pregnancy. If the increase in beta HCG is less than 66% over 2 days, we should suspect ectopic pregnancy or spontaneous abortion. Now let us see about transvaginal ultrasonography. It is another important investigation in ectopic pregnancy. In case of intrauterine pregnancy, gestation sac will be visible by 4 weeks of amenorrhea. Double decidual sign will be visualized at 5 weeks. Yolk sac will be seen by 5 to 6 weeks and fetal heartbeat will be visible by 7 weeks. In case of ectopic pregnancy, there will be empty uterus, intrauterine pseudo sac, Tubal swelling or ring sign with fetal heartbeat. This picture shows tubal swelling or ring sign. Another important finding in ectopic pregnancy is fluid in pouch of Douglas. There is something called heterotopic pregnancy. It is coexisting ectopic and intrauterine pregnancy at the same time. It is very rare. Now let us see about the management of an acute case of ectopic pregnancy. The patient should be resuscitated and should be subjected for immediate laparoscopy or laparotomy with salpingectomy of the affected tube. Salpingectomy means removal of fallopian tube. Now let us see about management of subacute cases of ectopic pregnancy. There is something called pregnancy of uncertain location. In this case, serial HCG monitoring should be done. Subacute cases of ectopic pregnancy can be managed either surgically or medically. This picture shows ectopic pregnancy in fallopian tube. This is the uterus. 
Now let us see about the surgical management of subacute cases of ectopic pregnancy. Surgical management is indicated when there is significant pelvic pain or when there is echogenic free peritoneal fluid that is hemoperitoneum. Laparoscopic approach is preferred. Linear salpingotomy is preferred when there is ampullary ectopic and when it is the only fallopian tube. Salpingotomy is a procedure in which you make an incision in the fallopian tube and remove the ectopic pregnancy. Fimbrial expression can be done when the ectopic pregnancy is present in the fimbrial end. Salpingectomy is the treatment of choice when contralateral tube is healthy or when there is uncontrolled bleeding or when it is the second ectopic in the same tube or when the tube is severely damaged or when the woman has completed her family. Laparotomy is preferred when the patient is hemodynamically unstable or when the surgeon is inexperienced. Now let us see about medical treatment of subacute cases. Medical treatment can be given when the patient is hemodynamically stable and in compliant patients. This is because close follow-up is necessary when medical treatment is given. Medical treatment is preferred in tubal ectopic pregnancy when the ectopic pregnancy is less than or equal to 3.5 cm in its greatest diameter and when there is no risk of rupture or significant bleeding. The advantages of medical treatment includes complications of surgery and anesthesia are avoided, less tubal damage, it is cost effective and the fertility is preserved. The drug of choice is methotrexate. It is given as single or multiple intramuscular doses. It can also be given as an injection directly into the ectopic pregnancy. After treatment with methotrexate, follow-up with beta HCG levels is necessary to determine the prognosis. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. For more such videos, please check out my playlists. If you like my videos, kindly subscribe. Your subscription will encourage me to make more videos. Thank you.